Bix, we've got Nexter and Hunter as well, of course. G2, CT side start on Vertigo. We're going to see what they can bring to the table on North's pick. This is a, uh, a very comfortable map for G2, despite North going for the choice of it. And so I don't think that should be holding them back in this series. It's going to be a fast play from North on the T side as they try and get up towards A. Hunter and Jax here to wait. Yeah, farm plant's already coming on in. A double flank on round. Actually, triple from this A ramp position. The bomb plant was denied as well because of those nades. And so that's bought even more time for this flank to find effect. But if you blinked, you've missed it. AZ has already dealt with these players wrapping round. And now Hunter and Jack will close the distance to get into this bomb site. Jax with an opener. And now looking to close the gap. Hunter alongside him. They spot one of the ramp players. It's AZ. And Christo finding the round there for North. The pistol goes their way. And they're going to go 1-0 up in this series. Looking to get off to a good T-side start here on Vertigo. Yeah, I love that call from G2, right? You know, how common T, uh, T rushes on the ramp on a pistol round are. G2 just set up passive, set up a retake and have a quick flank. They, they rush three players on middle and immediately come in on the back line. Although AZ really puts a stop to it. Flashes up towards A. Still pushing the perimeter here. Amanek's going to try and take a fight with the 5-7. Returns a kill and does get the chance to get back into the site safely. So an advantage here for G2 in a low economy round. But only one rifle left in the hands of North, at least currently. So that's a bit of a problem. The North want to look elsewhere. Do they want to peel away from this A site? Right now they're four in the forklift room, just holding. G2 are deciding to rotate players off because things have gone quiet towards A. They don't want to... Have North walking into a B-bomb site that's empty. That being said, it is still empty. They're going in on, on a mid-flank. Three players pushed to the top side. It's a weird round for G2. North looking like they're just going to commit late A, but here's that flank. Here's that backline play for G2. They timed it to per perfection. Christo, he's going to check it again, though. Jax is ready for the repeat. Hits him with a D. Five on three right now. G2 in control, but North still have the guns and are heading up towards A. Yeah, but as they go towards this A bomb site, they are towing the line between this heavy stack that G2 have here. And they might make the right Ooh. decision. They try and go back. Gay gets spotted and dealt with. And now for AZ and Cajun. I mean, if you're these two, you're already anticipating this site is going to be stacked. What? And they're not even able to deal with Hunter. How is he still alive? How is he still causing problems? AZ, 99 problems. And Hunter is just the beginning of them. Jax comes around from behind. And that air is G2 stealing that round away from North with the Force Buy. Is this going to start the Force Buy Wars? Certainly feels like it with no bomb plant found in that round. So it will be... ...on the sandbags. They're not even going to consider it because they heard Amanek run away. Next to dropping B players has another one coming towards him and that's going to be an easy job. Now, AZ giving away his position should be Hunter swinging. Oh, is he going to go for a knife? Right now, he's looking for a second kill at bare minimum, but he won't be able to see MSL, who is already up and past short. Amanek now or faking it, going back in, gets the info. And this should even be the round for G2, even if MSL gets a kill. Not a worry. Hunter finds a double, and that's going to be G2 taking the lead nice and early on. It's a curious move for North, right? You know, removing yeah. Jumpy when you think about the fact that he was the key to success versus G2. You know, coaches seems like the way to defeat this team. Yeah, definitely. It's a kryptonite. But I'm excited to see what Christo can bring to the server. We're not really going to get a good look into it in this round as it should just be the mop-up. And here is the mop-up. We were just a part of it. Thank you all for coming. Bit of spring cleaning here for G2. Get rid of some of the dust on the mantelpiece. Give it a shake outside. Shake the mantelpiece outside, yeah. yeah. That will get rid of all dust. That I'm is sure the you. tried and tested yeah. method. 3-1 here. G2 holding a nice little lead, but North are going to try and come back in with guns. They've got a full rifle round in number five. Set up towards A again. Cajun throwing the flashes, and we've got a fast approach here from North. They're going to get a bit of a fight back from G2, though, and pushing through the smoke, not to his best effort. Damanek he gets taken down. Resmoke does come into this position, but it's all a little too late. Nacelle, he's found another in the smoke, and he's going to kill him as well. Jax will get the trade eventually, but it comes at a cost. The two-to-one favor for North in this round. 
doesn't get out with the AK though. And we still have an open play. So G2 not out of this one just yet. And North have crawled away from A. G2 actually leaving the B site open. Nexus checking middle, but he will reroute. He will reconsider. Hey, Jun, this is actually the G2 Molly going in towards middle. And we're going to be seeing North execute onto this site. Two players here for G2. This rotate was perfectly timed. Jax and Nexus both fully white, though. And no one can help save uh, Jax at the site. Nexus can try and trade, but it's all a little too late. A one on three now left for Kenny with the AWP. It may be his birthday, but. Well, he's not blowing out any candles on this B-bomb site. That bomb is looking like it's going to explode, and there's nothing he can do about it. Can we all get a happy birthday, Kenny, in the chat? Let's got to, do it. Got to pour one out for this, this man. Am I logged in? No, I can't, actually. <laughs> Oh, that's a shit. Damn, you have to do your I job. Would have, I would have started it, you know? Yeah. I could have been the first. I could have beaten everyone to it because we don't have the delay. That's the 200 IQ move right there. Kenny, going to get away with this AWP at the very, very least. Terrorists win. And, you know, on this birthday, he's not given anything new. He, instead, he's appreciating what he already had, and that is the all in this round. He's able to keep that forward into the next. This was a uh, sick little B play here from North. They're able to get up close and personal. AZ really putting on a bit of a tear here to kickstart this series. And that always excites me. I like it when AZ's looking good in this server. It just feels right. And here's Hunter with a bit of ramp progression. Flashes himself in. There is a man close on the other side of the smoke, but it's actually going to be MSL to open this round up. Man advantage taken for North early on. G2 now going to have to fight their way back into this one, a man down. A little grenade from Amanek does do a boatload of damage to MSL, but right now AZ's going to get flashed out from the short side. G2 weren't even considering a man could have gone up behind the scaffolding, and they did. Ooh, Cajun holding for a mid push. He will miss the timing. Jack smokes off the choke, and Cajun hangs on. No rush here for North. They have a five on three, so things are certainly in their favor. They wait and see if G2 bring aggression or make any mistakes. Next up, oh, he doesn't realize that MSL and Co are so pushed up on this short side. He needs to have his gun out. Smoke will land. And there's the entry from AZ. He finds his second of the round. Kenny could cross behind the sandbags, but he knows a fight will present itself before that point. He gets a shot off, not connecting. AZ tries to chase him back. Nexa pushed up on the short side. You'll see that bomb is rotating B. North are just trying to keep G2 here, and they're doing a great job of it as Chris Doe clears the site. Nexa and Kenny really trying to get away with this kill. That's a missed shot, but Nexa does respond with a frag, and I think they've realized at this point the round's lost. The backstab is here. Cajun's ready to cut off the rotation, and the bomb is planted on B. No choice but to try and save again. And uh, next to his trial, ooh, his woes were just beginning. Kenny now in the firing line. And there's a reason they call it that. It's a line in which the bullets are fired. AZ able to put up four in that round there. Continuing to look good. 150 ADR almost. And very, very early tack pause called in for G2. They want to try and get ahead of this early. You want to try and slow North down as much as you can. One thing I will say, right, like you think about the rate at which it looked like North were able to accommodate Jumpy within this squad when yeah. they were using him as a stand-in. I think that's going to bode well for someone like Christo. You know, the fact that you don't have like him having to directly replace Kirby. Instead, he is, you know, like slotting into... Uh, well, I mean, I'm curious to see where his positions yeah. end up coming from, honestly, well, and how they're planning to use it. That's the thing, right? Because while, yeah, North fit Jumpy in very well, I mean, he's someone who knows the integral workings of North. He knows the system, he knows the default, he knows the setups, he knows the util, and that's what he was really doing uh, when we saw him on this team, just throwing a bunch of grenades a lot of the time and, and staying alive, mostly, on that CT side. So, yeah, I mean, Christo is not going to have that knowledge, at least not to the same level, but on... The contrary, what does play in his hand is he's definitely going to be a better individual player than Jumpy, right? This guy actually plays at, at, at you know, a decent level in Denmark. Jumpy hadn't played a professional match for three years prior to his tenure here at the Rotorio, so it's going to be nice to see Christo inside of this team. We saw him entering B last round, so where will he go this time? North, grouped up at the A site, Chris Do holding on to the flank. And, and that's nice, right? Like, put that player on your own. That's what Astralis were doing with Yugi at times. They'll put him on Ivy on T-side train. 
let him work it while the rest of group be. Uh, you know, if he can do something on his own and not have to worry about the, the game plan or his team necessarily, then that just gives him a lot more freedom. So execute here on A for North, but they are a man down so far. Yeah, and that might be enough for them to get out of there. That bomb is actually rotating back away from this A bomb site. They're going to leave Gade here to keep an eye on it and keep the pressure applied because there is a three man rotation here for G2 right now. And so this means this B site hold could fall to next set. There's a few more players aggressing up at the top of ramp, and every time they show their head, Ooh. Kenny is there to bring down the pain. Now this bomb is still wrapping all the way back, but it didn't go towards B. Instead, it's out in middle now with MSL and Christo. They get themselves up into construction and oh dear, Kenny had a vision and he sees all and it's a flawless round from G2. Three for Kenny on his AWP. Aren't they boy having a great game here? Yeah, I love a ramp progression. This is something you're actually going to see MSL do a lot uh, with the AWP on their CT side when he gets it in his hands. It's it's when things go quiet, when things get slow, and and the teaser lining up utility on ramp or just holding. That's a good time for a CT, even without a flash, just to play aggressively and, and and try and get a kill on that sandbags headshot position, or where Kenny found his towards the actual ramp side. So. Good way of forcing kills. Kenny does it twice in that round. He gets three at the end, and it puts G2 up by one. North's money is quite a mess right now. You can see three players can buy, two cannot, and so that might just be justification enough to fully invest and get everyone on the same page when it comes to the cash. That's exactly what they'll go for. Glills to facilitate utility, even Deagles on Cajun and Gade, so... North. This could just leave them broken and put G2 not only further in the lead, but on an anti-eco. Unless North have some special game plan behind it. What is the plan? Up towards A, early with three. Again, setting AZ up into position towards the top. You get flashed into fights on ramp by North. Smoke going down the short side. AZ's watching below it. He killed Amanek the other round, pushing through this position. So G2 probably passive as a result. They don't want to give up these frags. And it's Amanek and Hunter inside of the site with Nexa roaming around in the spawn, coming back to A. Oh, MSL's lining up this flash, and then they're going to look to go on the back of it. First one went out. No one's blind. And so now this push comes through. It's oh. actually a flash from G2. Nexa. Trying to get Amanek into the firing line, and then away. That is where he finds himself. The trades are still going in favor of North. They've been able to mop up Nexter as well, and now the pressure's kind of off. They've still got under a minute left on the clock. They've got themselves some weaponry to work with. There's still aggression here from G2. Hunter just had his attempt at it. He didn't see anyone at ramp, so this has led G2 to believe that this is all a fake. They start to rotate players back to B. And they could be correct in that assumption. The bomb is going back towards this side of the map. Hunters heard the Molotovs. Agent now sneaking up through oh, ramp. No. And that is a stellar kill from Hunter. That one decides everything. Because you'll see that bomb was about to come back to A on the info that Cage no. just got. And it still is in rotation. But now with that kill coming in, oh dear. G2, they fully rotated to B. And that's because Christo is making all this noise. He's dropped utility. He's forced the rotations. Bomb plant's going to come in with a wow. second to spare from North. Unless Hunter can deny it. And he's not able to do so this round could get out of hand for G2. I love that play from Hunter, but he shoots before he can even see. He shoots before he's through the smoke. He needs to run through that and, and try and do it you know, either silently or, or shoot when you can see your opponents because he just gives away his position and North take him down. Now, the retake for G2 and they are getting wrapped. They are getting fried. Christo should have this round under lock and key and he does. Taking down Kenny, MSL peaks the sight and that's going to be North saying goodnight to G2. Winning a, a round that really they shouldn't have if you look at the economy. We had Deagles in play. We had Galil on Christo and it's not going to be a problem for North to shut it down. That late rotate, the back and forth, right? The fact that that bomb even goes towards A is a great call from North because at one point looking like it was going to hit B, especially after Cajun died on the site, G2 rotated thinking that was a solo lurker. If anything, they were right, but the end result oh, has a different answer. It's one that goes North's way. 4-4, and the money broken from G2. Anything they can do, North can do better. 
and G2 just have pistols here. Jax is looking for a kill lower. He's just missed the timing on the bomb. Cajun is bringing that to forklift. Check it. Oh, Jax, yeah, he's played that position before. This time, punished for it. There was actually noise on the ladder made. So that bait occasion in. And now he's going to hang around, expecting maybe another player. And Kenny is there, not for long. Christo finds him. And North can just group and hit A here in this five on three. Even if G2 had stacked the site, it's still not going to be a problem for North. Broken a sweat in uh, in this anti eco round. And that's set to continue. This could end up being a flawless one for North. Starting to uh, to build up quite the bank account here over on Vertigo. A T side off to a bit of a rip roaring beginning. One of the other things I'll say is that North, they're actually a team, I think, that do a stellar job on the CT side of play as well, right? Like, they have a lot of ideas as to how to approach this A bomb site in particular. So, you know, I do think that for G2, putting up a pretty decent half here is, is going to bode massively heading into the second half of play. Because North are going to have a lot to fall back on. And if you let them start to run away with this, well, then that's where things get scary. I will say when G2 play this map, though, their T sides are, are excellent. They are a lot better than their CT sides. They definitely have problems there. So, you know, obviously goes both ways, right? But G2, for them to lose the half, wouldn't be them out of the map by any means of the word. Right now, they're competitive at least. Money is not great, though. We've gone for the buy with a glass cannon orb and a fast, aggressive round for Hunter, who again tries to fight down ramp. But again, AC's beating him to this position. And not that it's a problem. AC's not doing anything, but North don't know this factor. If, if AC flashes or even just goes through the smoke, he has a guaranteed kill at bare minimum. So it's worked in the past. He's going to use it again. And there it is, a free kill. He follows up through the top, finding the orb of Kenny. He had no armor. And that's why the kill comes so quickly. North. They've been putting AZ in this position off of spawn every round, and G2 just haven't worked it out. They might need to. Amanek does get their responsive kill, but it comes at a cost. They're down by two, and he's tagged up as well. Even walking past the wallbang spot is a bit of a danger, but he will get back into the site as North Group and try and take the bomb to B. Oh, G2 have read this. G2 yeah. have read this. This is finally where these very, very aggressive rotations away, like the first sign of it going quiet, eh, actually might be a benefit for G2. Because in a lot of these rounds, it's held them back. And this time, now with that kill coming in on the next, they're not going to be ready for a hold still inside of this site. Jax, the last man remaining, but he does have the bomb. MSL's offered it up, and so it's Gade in this 1v1. Jax on the other side. Well, I'm down at his feet, but Gade was last heard making noise at a ramp. That was the last time that G2 had any idea as to his whereabouts. So Jax has read this as a CT slash mid flank. He's going to go back, clear all these positions. And this isn't actually as bad as it may seem, because now Jax at least has secured this back line. He knows that this play is likely coming in through ramp. He will have to still maintain a bit of awareness, but now that he's seen the player in the <gasps> site, he knows the bomb's been retrieved and Gade is going to stick the plant. Jack still just holding. Oh. Gade yeah, trying to maneuver his way out of harm's way. He does get up onto the box. Flash goes high and Jack's trying to peek in on the back of it. Gade holding oh. the line, but Jack just a little bit quicker on the trigger. Going to grab that defuse there for G2. A fifth on the board. And finally, we see why they've been rotating so willfully off of this A site. Right. Clearly, they've been burned by these fakes before. Yeah. They're not looking to repeat it again. That's the thing, right? North get these two kills, and, and the game plan there for North, you, you may look at that from the outside and go, oh, well, G2 read it, so it was a bad play from North. It's not a bad play from North, it's just that G2 expected it because North had done it a lot, right? North are trying to make G2 think they're setting up for an A execute. They know G2 don't have any info towards the ramp. They've just both died there. And so, in theory, G2 should be stacked on A, right? That's the theory. But no, North go quiet, G2 gamble B, Worst case scenario there for G2, North commit A, and they save three guns on B. It's not even a worry. G2 get weapons out of that round. But best case, North running to B, not expecting the triple stack. And you could tell that was clear, right? There were like waves of defense from G2. First player peaks, he gets a kill, he dies. Second player peaks, gets a kill, dies. 
After that point, North completely discount the fact that there's a player in the site because they go, we killed two. There's no way there's three B. And that's when they lose the bomb. And Jax is able to close the one-on-one -on -one off the back of that kill. So big round from Jax and great call from Nexa and the boys. It's put G2 up to five. North, though, still a strong T side to their name. They've got AZ once again into this, into this position. But this time G2, they've realized they have not won many fan, uh, fights towards the ramp. And so they're just going to completely give it up. This round, a big thing to note as well is that Cajun B is floating around in middle and he might look to come in on one of these late lurks in through mid. Hunter, going over the top of this smoke and taking a peek down the ramp. I didn't even realize you could get that deep on down, but he's peeking over the top of it, making it look easy. Didn't see anything from his aggression. And so I wonder if this is going to cause G2 to lean back over towards B early on. That's usually been the response when they haven't spotted ramp players, but now with the utility coming out, it's become a little too Ooh. clear that ramp is still an object of desire. Amanek going to trade one before getting dealt with that. Into this four on four, and once again, it's a stalemate for ramp. Hunter's regression as, uh, re as well. He's gone towards Shaw. Kenny is drawing them in from the site, and North are looking like they're going to commit here. MSL's up short with the bomb. He's got to beat this MP7 uh, to the punch, but it's already beaten him. He's got an AK as well. Hunter now armed and dangerous, even more so than usual. Kenny finding a kill from the short side. He does get traded, but time is the biggest issue for North. 15 seconds, now 10. Nexa is inside of a smoke in the site, and Jax is still here in CT as well. Good luck getting a partner with North. Player on top of the site covers, though, and Cajun gets a kill. Now it's up to Jax. He can't stop the front. He can only get the retake, and he's been tagged down to three. Good grenade, but good luck getting back through this choke point. Yeah, he's still sticking around, but I don't think we even see Jax attempt this. He's gone. He's out of it. He's running away. It's a six on the board for North. Cajun B, the ever watchful eye of young gun Christo. Saves that round with a kill up on the boxes. Turns it from a 2v1 to a, uh, sorry, from a 2v2 to a 2v1, and even tags Jax when he tries to throw the uh, the nade from CT. I love the awareness there from Cajun, right? He sees Jax back there and he's thinking, like, what's the grimiest thing you can do? Nade line up on the planter. What's Cajun ready for? The nade line up on the planter. So six now on the board for this north side. And these A ramp, ramp duels continuing to be a real problem for G2. I do think, you know, partially down to the fact that we've only seen Kenny with this orb a handful of times. It's already making some sense that they're not big on peaking ramp right now. But this is something that North are just going to keep on exploiting as long as it's yielding results, right? Yeah. Not in the traditional way as well, right? Like, North aren't rushing out, running the gun like a lot of teams do towards this position. They're taking it very slow, trying to outmaneuver G2 on those rotations. So. Lots of fights on the ramp this time. Jax gets tagged to hell and back. Hunter, well, he doesn't come back. He just gets killed through the smoke. And, well, North, a man advantage and good damage onto this, uh, essentially, an anti-eco, even though players are fully committed to some of their buys. G2 don't have a lot of money. And North don't have a lot of knowledge because they are not aware that G2 are walking through the flank right now. Push down on the A ramp. Now, North still have B with only one man on the defense, but that is Nexa. He's a bit of a B side beast here with the 5 7. Christo leading the charge. A flash is good, and uh, Nexa can't see a thing. Kenny's gone from the flank. Amanek will follow, and uh, one by one, it's just G2 falling apart. Oh dear, that's messy. Jack's let some pass, but he doesn't realize until it's too late. North, seven rounds at the end of this one, and G2 are still broken, so North can continue to build. This is certainly not the uh, the G2 I was expecting we were going to get. And I think less than that, not the North I was expecting. You know, I figured with Christo being brought into the roster, there might be some, uh, or like a, like a bit of a slow start here from North as he kind of adjusted. But I tell you what, like it's all looking good right now. AZ as well is having a great game. They're holding for the mid. Oh, that's a nice deed. But is it going to be anything more? No one's checked for MSL. So he's actually turned this back in favor of North and continues. Crazy. Now the uh, the savior that is Gabe comes in, takes a bullet, get down. Mr. President he says to MSL. And oh, there we go. MSL's actually kitted out to hold for his own. 
four in that round and an eighth on the board for North. Reinvestment coming through from G2, but if they don't end it here and now, if they don't put up a round, then they're force buying in, in round 15. Yeah, this is turned from, you know, a neck and neck game to a game that North are very much in control of and, and might even 10-5 this half. And that's that bodes very well for North, who who really need anything they can get in this series coming in as the underdogs, right? Like they may have, of course, you know, G2, the, the, the team that loses to coaches and stand-ins on the other side, but G2 have been a hot to trot. They have been putting up fights. They were in the final of RTR as well. Although, you know, they were saying, even Malik was saying in that interview that they weren't playing at the level that they know they can, and G2 have a lot more to achieve, but right here, right now, that's when we need that level. And, well, it's not there. It is for North, however. 8-5 up, and another slow crawl towards the A ramp. They've got most of their team here. Cresto peeling away from B late. Kenny's here with the AWP, though. That could be a positive change for the side of G2. Not playing too aggressive. We've got that boost up for Hunter. Won't last long. Fairly exposed in that position, and the spam is, of course, a bit of a danger as well. So, let's see if Kenny can do something as the smoke begins to fade on short. Ooh. Oh dear, that's not the openers you wanted if you're G2. Amanek, can he fare any better? He does have support if needed from Jax, and between them, they've kept G2 in this round. They've kept it in a three on three. Are they saving already? It, it kind of looked that way, didn't it? Amanek does not look like he's believing in this 3v3 retake. He's actually already looping round in through mid. Now, he could be looking to come in on a flank, but it feels like this is going to take so long. Like, he's sneaking right now. They know they can't win the round. I think they just want the kills at this point. There's no kit for this retake anyway. So even if they were going for it, the time would be the biggest issue. Yeah, they're going to start to barrel on into the site, and now they're hoping that this flank Ooh. can deliver. But it's only Jax left. The flank gets cut down, doesn't even have impact. There's no time, no kip, no anything here for G2. And it's going to be a north round all day long. It's just, can, can they deal with Jax? And indeed they can. Yeah, that's a peculiar one. I would have liked to just see G2 straight up save, right? You said it yourself, they won't have money for the last round of the half if they lose their guns. So, like, you know, three on three, post pawn. I know you look at that and you look at the numbers and you go, guys, we can win this. And yeah, for sure, they will get the first kill and suddenly that's your round. But, you know, that's it's either commit or save. You don't get to, especially in Vertigo, in, in A retakes, you don't get to do half or, like, feel out the first kill. You're either going for it or you're not going for it. G2, they throw all their eggs in the basket and the basket gets crushed along with the eggs. 9-5 for North, in control of this game and looking for double digits uh, at the end of the uh, first half. It's going to be a B play here, fully grouped up. They made a bit of noise on A early on that's kept G2 stacked. Nexa is alone, they're going to check him and he can't even get a kill. Shots fire, but Crystal is quick. Uh, North are even faster into the B bomb site. This time they've beaten every player of G2 there and there's nothing G2 can do. They've got to play for retake here in the last round of the half. So much utility. Yeah, and like, you know, even when this fades, you've still got that much more to hold on to, right? There's still a smoke and a molly on Gade. There's a Molotov for MSL. This is so problematic for G2. They are looking for any way back into this round. The flash is going to go in. They try and smoke play. They do manage to deal with MSL, but AZ. Well, 10 5 at the end of the first half of play. And right now, North leading in a very, very big way. You can see those Betway odds. They've closed right on down. And I think justifiably so. The Danes here really packing the heat in this map. Yeah, but have they got it on both halves, Harry? That's the question we're all wondering here. North on the CT side. Now let's G2 control the pace and the flow of this game. You'll notice North have a lot of utility in this pistol round. Three HE grenades. I imagine they are going to be throwing those towards the plant spot. More likely to be on A than not. But right now, this setup is very inquisitive. G2 barely leaving the spawn in some parts. The bomb is still there. So is Nexa. So we'll see where this one ends up. I want to take some mid control first. G2 have a lot of nice mid utility on this map. So we'll keep our eyes out for that. Jade does spot the boost. And fall off after that Cajun also laying down some damage North have three in mid because as I said they're playing retake eh? they want these grenades for the plant spot from CT so if G2 do go towards A and it's looking like that's the plan North this is the best case scenario MSL is going to get the info he's going to fire a shot he'll run back to CT and he'll line up the grenades for the plant after that North will play for retake
You know, that's if G2 get the bomb down on the second time around, right? If they don't, if the, the bomb gets stopped, the North might just flood the site. We'll see. There's loads of ways you can play this, but I really like the idea from North. Ooh, oh, and that's going to help even further. Christo getting one through the smoke, and now these nades, if they find another kill, that's oh, going to help even more. Goodbye, bye -bye. Nexa. And a follow-up. This is all through smoke. G2 haven't even seen a Dane yet. They've just been near them. They've heard the pistols ringing on out, and they've got nothing to show for it. But now with the bomb planted, there's at least that going their way. Two on five here, required from Kenny and Amanek. Can they do it? These USPs starting to close the distance. Two players dinked down, but the kill's not found. And this leaves Amanek at a 1v5. Ooh. And he's not able to do the damage. Defuse comes on in and 11th on the board for North. I love that yeah. A-side setup with the nade. That's a great pistol for North. The only danger is that if G2 run a fast round, suddenly it's a little more dangerous. I don't mean towards A, obviously. If it goes fast A, you know, North are going to have the same situation. But if they go fast anywhere else, like a quick mid or a quick B, that can really be a problem for North who don't have armor to withstand the Glocks and, and the tirade of them. So yeah, there are ways that round can go badly, but I wouldn't be surprised if North have lineups for nades that land on B from, from middle or from CT that hit default there as well. Right, so that, that setup works uh, no matter where G2 go. Who knows? But at least on the A site, that's a very safe play. A lot of teams have been doing that. And North will guarantee a pistol after a 10 round half as well. So very much in control of this game. Cajun has just missed the timing. Jax has gone in on the boost, but he's not wide yet. He will go for it. Cajun gives him a tap and falls on back. Let's AZ clean up the rest of these T's. And well, Kenny will join Jax pretty quickly after that one. It should be an anti eco with no funny business for North. Taking things nice and safe. AZ's looked excellent in this game as well, right? Like, look at him on the T side, running up top on short side, getting so many kills of flashes from North. CT, yeah, he's holding his own. Three kills in that round. And 12, 21 and 9 right now. Something along the sorts. Yeah, AZ really showing up in this series. Well, yeah, you know, I think that makes a lot of sense as well, right? When you think about, like, the dynamic of this North squad, I think that Kirby and AZ are, like, two of the people we look towards to do a lot of the damage. And it always felt like, you know, Kirby was, was like, one of the guys that we wanted to be the stars of this team. And, and uh, that was, like, 100% true, especially when he first joined the squad, you know, coming off the back of an MVP with Astralis, looking so good. And then he kind of disappeared. But now, like, now that he's not in the squad, ooh, it feels like a lot of the pressure is on AZ to step up. And the fact that he's being used and put in all these high-impact spots is doing great things for him in this game. Now, he gets removed early on in this round, but he was able to take a man to the grave with him. MSL and Cajun B still alive at this A-bomb site, and they're looking to go for a fight. Oh, Kenny actually dear. swings out the ramp. Wasn't able to find the kill the first time around, but certainly does the second. And this is now the A-site under lock and key. Gabe, nowhere near this retake. He's actually all the way over at B. It's nice and quiet where he is, so I kind of like that. Uh, he's going to look to get away with this weapon into the follow-up round. Probably wants anything but a specific gun. MP9 is incredible. I don't think anyone's arguing against it. But you would rather have an AK or an M4 here if your name is Gade. Yeah, but no hunting. I mean, he's got like thousands of dollars of utility. So they definitely don't want to risk losing everything just to for the potential of, of, of upgrading to a gun that likely won't even go their way. Anyway, G2 not only saving on the site, but doing it all together. And so they won't lose any players here. The bomb will explode. Uh, this is pretty much a default save spot on Vertigo. At least on that A site, you don't want to go below. Because then you're just closer to the bomb, but vertically underneath it. So, as opposed to horizontally underneath, which doesn't make sense. 6 12, though. G2, they found a crucial round, a rifle round on this T side to potentially start a comeback here on Vertigo. We know G2 have a very explosive T half on this map, and I wanted to see what it was made of. But North, well, they're going to let it happen easily. They're going to give away a round here. Not decided to force by round the one save gun. Good decision from North. They will have lost bonus building. G2 going to give them a little more lost bonus on this A site. It's stacked full of names. Snow is pushing the smoke. 
Hunter will not let him get, get away with that. He's already looking at it, and yeah, an immediate kill coming through as a smoke against the Fade. Gade, same story, he's dead. Uh, two out of four on this A site. There's another one there. Jax will clean it up. Him and Kenny combine. It's going to be Cajun dropped on the flank. Nice, easy round for G2, as we all expected. That will be their seventh. North, though, coming in with guns. And MSL will be able to get the AWP if he wants, but ops for utility instead. Makes sense. No ops in this game so far, at least in the second half. And I don't really see that changing. Unless North need it. Yeah, I mean, that's like that's like one of the advantages they have. You know, they've got this wiggle room to play with. They can kind of feel it out and see if that AWP is a requirement. And they don't need it here and now. So AZ trying to duel at the wrap. These nades have found a lot of damage early Ooh. on. But AZ just gets overwhelmed, swept under the rug, and suddenly it's only MSL left at this A side of the map. Now, rotations have come through. Pretty much everyone for North is going to find their way here. But... G2, they pump the brakes, you know, they know that at this point, five on three, the ball's in their court and they don't have to commit to A if they don't want to, so they're going to feel it out. They throw these close smokes to give them a bail. Pushing over the top is going to be MSL. Can he find anything from this position? Oh. That kill there, that's the bomb, but he gets tagged very, very low on the cross back. If Gade is able to get this kill onto Jax, then it's actually MSL to do it. Now it's a three on three. Now North are interested. Maybe they weren't before. And suddenly G2 are kind of regretting every decision they've ever made. They're going back into A. They've got to retrieve this bomb. And thankfully, Kenny will be there to provide the man advantage for the French squad. Pass on the other side of the box as well. So that Molly isn't going to touch him, but the smoke's faded. Cajun's pushed through, trying to fight. He's found Kenny running back. He doesn't know, though. Amanek is still in the same position in the corner. Kenny died so Amanek could live in this spot. And it's one that North might not expect, but they check it hard. Gave with a kill. Hunter holding the bomb, but he's already missed some shots. He's hit Cajun down low. But no tap yet. North are going to smoke it. They will get on it, but he didn't hear because of the flashback. Second time around, sticking the defuse. Hunter's off it he's found one north have taken off the bomb hunter just needs one shot and he will receive it instead of give it cajun has enough time for the defuse and he has a round for north he gets off the bomb in the one-on-one -on -one and to great success that's a huge clutch from north and that's a three on five initially g2 powered their way into that side to start off so the fact that north even picked that up at the post plant is incredible yeah, it really is, man. Like, Vertigo is looking to be such a good map for this North squad. Such a joy to watch them play on it. And a tactical pause called on in from North, despite being the team to pick that up. Maybe not happy with the circumstances that went down, or maybe just wanting to address uh, something that they're maybe viewing as a problem. Maybe we see an end to this ramp aggression from North. Yeah, because remember, you know, they win that round off great individuals, but it's also the great individuals of G2 that lose North the opening two picks of that, right? Fast ramp play. That's why G2 are so good at this map, and that's why it's important that North, you know, not only win a great first half, but also the pistol, and now the first rifle round. So it saved them from this, you know, still potential streak of G2. They could have it left in them. But they've got to warm up here and now. They've got to get the next round or, or things will be very problematic. Oh, dear. Oh, oh this no. This is how they were trying to deal with it. A little boost assembled. It's AZ looking down over here towards ramp. Oh, no one's keeping an eye on this for G2. AZ spamming back, which is always a risky game to play. They weren't able to find him through the wall bang, and now North sit in a five on four. They were able to find this last round in a three on five, so this one should be easy, right? Famous last words. Yeah, we have a good bit of utility left for G2 to do damage, right? Eight Gs and Molotovs throwing into North, keeping them out of certain positions. One smoke on Hunter, and that's needed for the short side. You might want to just right click that here on the corner to get a plant down for G2. Covers there, next crosses, but grenades are going to follow. There's two of them as well. Oh, they read it. North, don't just throw the default nades. They hear the plant on the left, and they throw it to the left. But Nexus still stands at 20 points of health. He's avoided a ma uh, the a mass of artillery. And now North are coming in with a retake. Yeah, time is going to start to become a bit of a problem for North. Though. They've got to go, and they've got to go now. That flash is going to signal the approach. And here they come, teaming into the site. Hunter. Not able to hold the line. It's left in a two on three. Jack's holding from ramp does find one, but they're on oh. the floor. 
And Gade has his oh, no, teammate kit. back. They didn't have a kit on Christo. Ooh, Gade did. It's, it's going to be close. I think he's got it. 14 on the board for Norse. As Christo and Gade navigate the 2v2 well. And they deal with that round. It's down to the wire, but it still comes up in favor of the Danes. Showing absolutely no signs of slowing down here. Two away from taking their map pick in this series. Yeah, this has been an excellent game from North, right? Allowing two T-side rounds for G2, and that is it so far. I don't know if that's even going to change, right? The money isn't great for G2. They're going to be able to fall by, but, you know, Jax is even on 36 here, so that's uh, where we're at right now. Hunter might have to drop over a gun. Instead, he's going to buy the AWP, and I'm not against that. Kenny's not really had it on the T-side, so we finally get that in play for a bit. 7 to 14, though. G2 aren't exactly in control of this one. Do they have anything left? Anything at all? I mean, let's see. They got to show it now or they don't show it at all. And it's a fast A play here from G2. Into the site they go. Next has opened up, but as quick as the kills have come through for G2, the trades have also been Ooh. there. However, this time around, Hunter and Kenny are able to keep this in the advantage of the Frenchman. Hunter's even trying to extend that advantage further. He's pushed up close into CT North. Is this the bridge too far? Is this the retake that they're not even thinking about attempting? They have such a lead. They have such round buffer that they may as well consider it, right? If you get next kill, suddenly it's on. If you lose, no, then the other player saves. But actually, they see an orb. They feel like it's too good to be true, and they will just run away with it. And that's not a bad call by any means for North. But what is, is how Hunter is flanking. And he can really put some hurt their way. Nice shot from AZ. We'll get away with this AWP. It seems no one's close enough to kill. It's going to be an eighth round for G2, finding their third of the half. Half, rather. Still against insurmountable odds. And that won't change. No, they've uh, they've really been struggling as well. And, you know, they're going to need to st string together six in a row here on their T side. They need to get more in a row than they've managed to do at all in this matchup thus far. So, yeah, you're asking G2 to play the best they've played so far here on Vertigo in these next few rounds. Let's see if they can answer the call. There's no money for North in this round. It's only this AWP on AZ, and he's already stripped one from the ranks of G2 with it. Now looking to take himself another with this AWP. And if he waits, if he's patient, maybe Kenny will offer something up. Kenny trying to swing Ooh, round, and AZ saw the barrel, miss shot, goes oh back in, my. and it's AZ to best Kenny S, reposted back up on the wrap, G2, this is the only weapon that North have in this round, and so far it has found absolutely devastating results, they're going to back away, they're going to concede some ramp control, they're still hanging around, that makes me think that this is probably still a commitment towards A, but... As they're about to find out, this AWP has not rotated away, and MSL's even tagged up Jax with just the USP. AZ's going to get boosted. Oh, they're really doing yeah. everything they yeah. can to set him up. I love it. I love watching AZ put in these power positions, because this man, if he's got one thing, it is the power. And this AWP looking to put up another. It's AZ with a third. The trade does come in from Jax at the site, but he's very, very low. And Amanek in this smoke as well here to help him. There's a chance for G2. Jax has lit the Ooh. way, and he's continued to light it up in the server. Amanek turned wow. out, and they line up for him. So G2, they regain control of that round. They tame the beast that is AZ, and they narrowly put another one up on the board. But I'm absolutely loving what we're seeing out of this guy right now. AZ, mm, it feels good to see him getting set up again looking to be the star of this squad you can't like you can't ask for anything more three kills but i mean we'll say g2 do such a great job of dealing with that threat the the key is they don't rush the plant they fake it out if they rush the plant there they're going to get overwhelmed while amanek is planting instead it, it's cover provided or jackson i think it was planting it's, it's cover provided and he fakes the bomb he gets off the first player from north pushes he kills him taps the bomb again just great fake work right now it's an eco from north they're looking to throw a bit of chaos uh, the way of g2 it's 
actually found a, a, only one kill. Trades are actually easy for G2 against the Army of Pistols. Surprise, surprise. Ten rounds up for the Frenchman now. This comeback is at least under consideration. 14-10 for North. Another buy round available. Think about how close a round got where they had four USPs and an AWP, or now the AWP is surrounded with rifles. So you would, uh, you would be leaning the way of North, but let's see. Right now, MSL is back in the hands of the AWP, not AZ, although that makes more sense. That being said, AZ's got nearly 30 kills. I think at this point, if AZ wants the AWP, give him the AWP, but he's fine to give it back to his in-game leader, and North settle back on the A side with three. this point they're gonna be asking themselves do G2 just go A again and well here's G2 setting up outside of A again by the looks of things right now so the answer to that it might surprise you it might be yes as they're stacked up outside MSL with his AWP pointed facing at the ramp and he's looking to strip this man advantage away the AWP has been very very good at this on either side of the coin oh dear MSL not able to land that shot will do this second time around the trade is down near immediate but just as you've said that AZ two kills quick as you like over the top of the site over the top of the smokes Amanek left in the clutch to deny map point to North, and he has removed the first man. Cajun B and Gade left in this one, two on two. They've got this crossfire set up. Amanek taps the bomb, creeps Ooh, forward, and he taps down no. a man, but oh right, no, Amanek. So sad. Deary me, so close, yeah. and yet at the same time, so monumentally far. Yeah, that's a nice nice play from Gade there. The reason Amanek runs that way is because obviously he doesn't know where Gade is, but Gade should be playing off of the trade of Cajun, right? Cajun dies on the boost and Gade doesn't do anything. He just lets him get away with it because Gade's playing for the win, and, and that's a great play. Amanek tries to read it. Instead, it's Gade one step ahead, and that will put North on 15. So just one step away. And another tactical pause coming through for North, leaving just a solo one remaining. G2 at least have the money from the couple, or three rounds rather, that they won in a row. But I mean, right now you're not thinking about the cash. You're simply thinking about the fact you're five rounds behind on North's map pick. We do have Inferno after this though, gents and ladies. And remember that is not a great map for North, at least not right now. But with a new guy on the block with a stand in, Taking the slot for Kierby. Things are going well. North just love playing without their full roster. What can you say? G2, it's back to this A site. Not one that's been treating them too kindly. I feel like there's so much more in the playbook from G2 from what we've seen in the Road to Rio and Pro League, and uh, we're just not seeing any of it. We're just seeing G2 go A. And that's all they've done this entire half, and unsurprisingly, North, they're ready for it. Yeah, AZ, 32 kills, 130 ADR. I don't know. I don't know what he's been eating. I don't know what he's been drinking. Maybe some monster energy. Is AZ continuing from CT, lays down a double, has set up North for this round, a 3v2 now as they're posted up on for the retake a man up g2 having to try and use this bomb to their advantage jack's gonna stay around inside of the site amanek back at pit jacks and amanek were the two oh. that were able to bail g2 out last time around but this time it's all on to amanek he does light up the first man Gade has a kit, so he's going to look to get on this bomb. Drops the smoke onto it as well. Amanek peeking up and over, and he almost catches them, but not quite. The defuse is going to come on in. And North, they'll take their map pick. 16 to 10.